How safe is Germany? Number one is safety. I find the safety here in Germany completely different, obviously, than New York and New York City, but I actually feel as a woman quite safe in general here in Germany. I don't feel like I have to clutch my bag, clutch my pearls every time I'm walking down the street. I generally do feel very, very safe in the streets. Germany seems to be the safest country in the world if you believe the statements of various YouTubers who moved to Germany, they all felt very safe. But how does it fit that other Germans say that things are getting worse? Perhaps we need to clarify the statements. Very many people in right-wing extremist circles complain about insecurity or danger. Which, of course, and almost always comes from people with foreign roots. That's logical, but when people are afraid, they vote for something else and then extreme parties gain support. This is not only the case in Germany, but also in other European countries. Right-wing parties, nationalistic parties claim that people are no longer secure in their lives. But not every woman who says she's afraid to walk through the city in the evening is an extreme right-wing agitator. No, of course not. Let's look at a few figures first. In the 2017 Fear of Crime survey, randomly selected people over the age of 16 in Germany were interviewed by telephone and in German, Turkish and Russian. Extrapolating, the survey found that in the last five years, between 2012 and 2017, around 90% had been victims of malware, 13% victims of fraud, 11.5% victims of theft and around 9% victims of assaults. In household crimes, a good 14% had a bike stolen, 8% had their home broken into, though less than 1% had their car stolen. We also had a bike stolen last year. Here you can see, however, that a large part of the cases happened just with young people up to 24 years, especially in terms of assault. It seems to me that there are more fights between teenagers and twins than with older people. An interesting point is a pre-justice assault. Also only 1.5% were victims of this type of violence. Reasons were both the origin with 0.52%, skin color with 0.25% and religion with 0.23%. If you look at it in terms of states, Personal theft numbers were elevated in Berlin, Hesse and Hamburg, while assault numbers were elevated in Berlin, Saxony-Anhalt and Bavaria. And home burglary numbers were highest in Bremen, Brandenburg and Berlin. But what about the feeling? 6.3% feel very unsafe in their living environment, 15.2% rather unsafe, 41.9% rather safe and 36.7% very safe. Among them we see that the greatest fear is being the victim of a home burglary and then being victim of a terrorist attack. Wait, terrorist attack? Yes, there was a right-wing extremist NSU who attacked and murdered police officers and especially people with a immigration background for years. In the 70s and 80s there was a far-left Red Army faction which kidnapped and murdered politicians and businessmen and we also remember the attack with a truck on the Christmas market in Berlin by an Islamist terrorist with 13 fatalities. So, in fact, there were or are terrorist attacks also in Germany. It doesn't always have to be death either. Sometimes it's enough for the terrorist to simply stir up fear and set fire to a planned shelter for refugees. In fact, people with an immigration background feel more insecure in the living environment than other residents. And considering that they are much more likely to be victims of such an attack 
relative to the rest of the population, the fear may even be well founded. But what is the risk of dying from such an attack? It is even slightly more likely to die from a lightning strike, over 800 times more likely to die in German traffic and even about 3,800 times more likely to die from a stroke or the flu. So the perceived fear of becoming a victim does not necessarily match the real probability. What is interesting about these fears is this survey. People without an immigration background have the least fear about everything, while people from the former Soviet Union fear assault the most. Fear of sexual harassment is extremely high among men and women from Turkey. Again, this is a fear that may not always be rationally based. But how does the risk compare internationally? The 2021 study on Global Crime Index puts Germany in ninth place with a score of 4.9. Is that a good thing? Let's start with the fear of death. Worldwide 6.1 people are murdered per 100,000, with men being 90% of the perpetrators and 80% of the victims. Globally Europe is doing quite well in terms of murders. If we take a closer look, there seems to be a certain focal points of homicides. Even though women are less often the victims, in the case of women, the perpetrators are predominantly from their family environment. If you look at the murder rate, it can be by stabbing, where the map looks like this with a focus on Russia and Southern Africa, or by firearms where the focus moved to South and North America. While we have 0.23 victims per 100,000 inhabitants for deaths by stabbing, we have 0.01 victims from firearms, which puts us in the 179th place worldwide. If we look here, perhaps also in the context of possible terrorist attacks at the spree killings, we have the following table for Europe and North America for the period 2009 to 2015. For those wondering why Norway is at the top, in 2011 a right-wing extremist murdered 77 mostly teenagers in a bomb attack in Oslo and on the island of Utøya. With a population of only about 5.5 million, such a high number occurs. On the other hand, if we look at a map of the numbers of mass shootings between 1989 and 2019, the picture is quite different there it becomes clear that this was a unique event in Norway. In that time there were five shootings in Germany with at least four deaths, which is a number to be counted for the statistic. The last rampage with firearms in 2016, 2019 and 2020 in Germany all had racist and right-wing extremist backgrounds. The 2023 crime in Hamburg was committed by a mentally disturbed perpetrator in a religious context. If you prefer to skip the following chapter, you have the chance to jump to the next chapter at the bottom of this list. You have three, two, one seconds to do so. Okay. Let's move to school shootings. When I saw this picture, I thought, oh, further referring to Germany, I thought, just one? Can't be. I can remember more. But the numbers here are from 2009 to 2018, nine years. In that time, there is one shooting listed here. When I look at this list of school rampages in the 21st century, I see that there were a few more before 2009. I guess we got lucky there with a the year. But also see a few more here that are in that period, highlighted in green. But only the ones marked in yellow were committed with firearms. The hatched was with small caliber rifle and muzzle loaders. In addition, 
Gun law were tightened again after the Vinoden rampage in March 2009. Afterwards, there was so far a shooting at a university in Heidelberg with weapons which the perpetrator had procured in Austria. These were a repeating rifle and a double barrel shotgun. Other killing spree were carried out with knives or crossbow. Of course, you do not drill with the kids at school about a possible shooting. Why should children be frightened of something that is highly unlikely and has never happened at an elementary school? And of course, the principals, teachers and police officers know how to respond to something like this. If we had the fear of sexual harassment before, here we have a survey of rape. This survey is difficult to evaluate. On the one hand, I am surprised by the high value in Sweden, or the value in Iceland, which in itself has such a great equality between the sexes. It is also written in the description of the value for Germany, funny way only in Germany, that the value cannot be accurate because there is a large dark figure. I had reported in the video of women's rights and the equality in Germany about how many women are victims of harassment. It should also be noted that in Sweden rules only yes means yes, so if there was no explicit consent for sexual intercourse, that is already rape. At this point I would like to bring in an interesting comment on a statement of mine. I wondered in a funny video by DW Europe that in the US apparently freedom of speech includes the right to insult others, whereas profanity is faded over the radio. Now I shouldn't talk about something like that if I came from a country where you even sue others even though you would have only been insulted and not physically attacked at all. This shows me two things. First, the person seems to believe only a physical health is important and mental health is not. On the other hand, however, I question what point we are starting from. In 2015, on New York's Eve in Cologne, more than 1,000 charges were filed for sexual harassment, attempted and five charges for completed rape. At that time, hundreds of women had been molested by some groups of young men, mainly from North Africa and the Arabian region, during the New Year's celebrations. Presumably, at least according to the law, rape is forbidden everywhere in the world. And in fact, many victims are ashamed to report it, which, in my personal opinion, helps no one except the perpetrator. But imagine the situation in your region. Do you think it is bad when a woman is caressed by men or pinched in the butt, when a woman is kissed or told how sexy she looks and whether she would like to come along tonight to have fun? In Germany, all of these are harassments and criminal offenses that can be reported and then prosecuted. Is that the case everywhere? As I said, in some countries, like probably in Sweden, the perception of that is even greater. So we probably already have a pretty good perception of what is right and what is wrong, still with room for improvement. But we are also concerned about mental health. One point that surprised me was the issue of kidnappings. Germany does not do well in this regard. About 80 people are kidnapped each year with a clearance rate of about 90%. Furthermore, about 16,000 children up to the age of 13 are reported missing in a year, while at the same time 97% of them are cleared up. Since the beginning of the statistical recording on 14th February 1957, there are about 1,700 unsolved missing children until January 2023. Reasons for this are almost either runaway or child abductions in the context of custody disputes. In the case of adolescents, up to the age of 18, there are another 78,000 missing persons reported each year, of which 97% are resolved, usually within a few days. Germany is among the least corrupt countries in the world. 
This is another reason why Germans trust the police. Police tra training takes place at one of 17 police agencies, 16 states in the federal government. There are no municipality police and the military police, the Feldjäger, typically have no police duties towards civilians. Thus, there are no police units like the Gendarmerie or Carabinieri. Depending on the federal state and the federal government, one can have an apprenticeship in the intermediate service, Mittlerer Dienst, which takes at least 24 months, or train and study in the higher service, Gehobener Dienst, which takes between 36 and 45 months. In some cases, you can also be hired in the highest service, Höherer Dienst, but then you must have completed a course of study, which usually includes the qualification to be a judge. After a certain probationary period following the training, police officers become usually civil servants. Intermediate service means the level of sergeants of all ranks. The higher service would be officers from lieutenant to captain and the highest service from major upwards if we were to compare this with an army. For people from England, for example, it may be unusual that police officers in Germany are equipped with a pistol, but this is rarely used. Whereas actually several thousand times animals had been redeemed. In 2022, the pistol was used 60 times against people, killing 11 and injuring 41. Here's an overview of the last 10 years. Why here only 10 deaths are given in 2022, in the other source 11, I cannot say. Like other European countries, Canada, Australia, Germany is at very low level here. You can and should dial 110 if you have a problem and ask the police for help. And if you come under police control, you can be very sure that you will be treated correctly and you don't have to fear for your life. In the Global Peace Index, Germany comes on a good 16th place with a value of 1.46, whereby the worldwide average lies with 2. Whether Germany is safer than the country you come from, you can compare here. As shown before, some crime is present and hate crime is unfortunately on the rise. However, the police can be trusted to do their job and the risk of dying from violence is very low. Let's hope that the detection rate will continue to increase and soon there will be good news like this in 2019. Thank you for your attention and take care.